let's learn how to create a blank calendar template in Illustrator in this super simple tutorial. With Illustrator open, come to File, New. I'm going to set up my calendar for US letter format. So let's go to Print, Set US letter, and I'm going to set my units to inches, just the one artboard, landscape orientation. You can add bleed if you like, I'm not going to for this example and just make sure my color mode is CMYK and my print resolution is 300. Once I'm happy, click Create. First, let's add our margins. So come to View, Rulers, Show Rulers, and also come to View, Guides, and Unlock Guides. From there, drag two rulers out onto the canvas. And because these are unlocked, we can use the Selection tool to select each one. So let's select the first one. Under Transform on the X axis, I'm gonna set 0.5, click Enter and now select the second ruler, come back to the same, and on the x-axis I'm going to come from the other side, so I'm going to do 11 minus 0.5 and press enter. Let's lock these guides, so view, guides, lock guides. You can also repeat this for the top and bottom if you like. Some good housekeeping, let's just save this AI document, file, save. I'm just going to put it in my generic DWD images folder and we'll just call this calendar.ai. Click save. Press OK. I'm going to build this calendar in layers. So if you come to your layers panel, and if you can't find this, it's under window layers. And my first layer I'm going to call grid. So make sure I'm on the grid layer, collapse the layers panel. Now I'm going to draw out my grid. So come to the left hand toolbar, select the rectangle tool, and click the fill and stroke icon in the bottom left to set a white fill and a black stroke. On the canvas, click out. A rectangle, it doesn't matter what shape it is, we're going to address that shortly. Select it with Selection Tool, and I want to create six copies of this for seven days of the week. So if you hold Alt or Option, that will change the cursor. Click and drag out, that will create a copy, and drag it out until it snaps in line with the original rectangle. Then release. To do this, make sure View Smart Guides is turned on. And now once I've done this once, if I press Command or Control D, I can duplicate the action. So let's do this four more times to create my seven. Using the selection tool, select all seven, and I'm going to align these with the rulers. So click and drag, and click and drag. Now that I have my columns, I'm going to need six rows. So let's do the same again. Select all with selection tool, hold Alt or Option, and then click and drag a duplicate down until they snap in line, and then use Command or Control D to duplicate another four times for six. Three, four, five, six. Let's Command or Control minus to zoom out. So I can adjust these a little more by clicking and dragging over with Selection Tool, and I can lengthen or shorten them accordingly until I'm happy with their arrangement. Now I need my tabs for the days of the week. So with the Selection Tool, select this top row. Again, Alt or Option. Click and drag up to create a duplicate. Let that snap in place. And then with the Selection Tool, I can click and drag these down because I want the tabs to be a little shorter than the grid for the days. So once happy, I can click off. At any time, I can go back in and I can change the size of this accordingly. My command control on to turn the guides off. I can see now I have a nice grid for my blank calendar. I can change the thickness of the stroke by selecting all the boxes, clicking my stroke, and then coming to window stroke and adding a stroke weight accordingly. So let's go with Let's go with one. Collapse and click off. Next, come back to Window Layers. Let's lock the grid in place, and now we're going to add the numbers. So create a new layer, and let's call this Numbers. With the Numbers layer selected, click your Type tool, and click and drag a type box out the size of the grid. The Smart Guides will help you snap this into place. And release. From there, simply type your first seven numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now tab between every value. So between one and two, and press tab. Again, click between two and three, press tab, and repeat for four, five, six, and seven. We need to know the length of each grid, so come back to the layers panel, lock your numbers and unlock the grid, and select one of the grids and go to transform, and we now have the width. So click this width and press command C to copy it. We're now going to use this to define the distance of the tab. So click off transform, lock your grid layer, unlock your numbers, collapse layers, and select the type box. From there, window, type, and tabs. Just drag the tabs panel up so I can see 
my numbers. Make sure your tabs are left aligned and we're now going to click for every number. So we'll start with two, click and set the X axis to the width of the grid that we copied earlier. So Command V to paste and press enter. Now click again. So now for three in the X axis, Command A to highlight, press delete and press Command V and then star for multiply or shift eight on the keyboard and two. So now that means tab it to the length of two grids, not one. Press enter. We'll now repeat this again. Click for four, and this time we'll do the same, but we'll star three. Now click for five in the x axis, star four, and continue this until we get to seven. And there you go. And now have my seven numbers for seven days of the week tabbed to the exact length of the grid. So x to come out of tabs. Select the type tool, click at the end of seven, press command or control A to highlight the seven numbers, command C to copy, click on the seven and then press enter to create a new row. Command V to copy and do this five times so that we get six rows of numbers. So three, four, five, six. So we now have the perfect distance for the X axis. Now we're going to increase the spacing on the Y axis. So use the selection tool to select the type box. Come to your character panel, and if you can't find it, it's in window character, and increase the line spacing tool until you have the numbers aligned perfectly with the grid. Let's give the numbers a little bit of personality using the character panel. So come to the type tool, click Command or Control A to select all numbers, and from here you can adjust font, sizing, and other options. So I'm going to select Montserrat, and let's make this font a little bigger. Press selection to come out of the type option. And lastly, let's create a little bit of spacing between the number and the top left of the grid by selecting the text box with the selection tool and just using the arrow keys to just let that number breathe a little more. So the good thing about doing it like this in one text box is I can either go in and manually change these numbers as such, or if I copy a set of numbers from say an online calendar, I can then paste this in to the text box. So let's delete these numbers, command V to paste, and there you go. I can fill the calendar in one go with a set of numbers. So add your numbers accordingly, either by manually writing them in or copy and pasting numbers in from an outside source. For the numbers for the next and previous months, I can come to the type tool, select them, and use the swatches panel to gray them out with a lighter color. Let's add the days of the week, come to the layers. I'm going to unlock the grid for now because I want to align the text box to the tab. Grab my type tool, click and drag out a text box, use the paragraph panel to center the text, and then use type, area type options, and align horizontal to center, to center the text on both axes. Once done, press OK. Let's type something in here, so Command A to select all, and I'm just going to type Wednesday because that's the longest day of the week, letters-wise. Select it with Selection Tool. Let's add some styling in the Character Panel. So let's go with Montserrat Bold and increase the size slightly. Select the text, hold Shift and select the tab and use the Align Panel, Align to Key Object, select this tab and then Align Center both ways. Let's use the Transform Tools just to line this up perfectly. Now select, hold Alt or Option, click and drag out to make a duplicate until it snaps into place and then Command or Control D to duplicate this. Go in with the Type tool, and let's add our days of the week. Selection to come out and click off. So now if I come to my Layers panel, I've got my numbers and my text on one layer, and I've got my grid on another layer. Let's lock the numbers, select the grid, we'll add a little bit of color to the tabs. So select this one, double click the Fill color, and let's select a color from the color picker, Press OK. Select the alternating tabs, holding Shift. Come to Layers and turn off the numbers, and then use the eyedropper tool to copy over the color and style. Repeat for the other tabs, so Selection Tool, Select, Fill Color, let's select another color in the color picker. Press OK. Select the other two tabs and hold Shift, eyedropper tool, and click to copy the style over. From there, turn back on the numbers and selection. Let's add another layer and call this Lines. Click to bring this underneath the grid. 
select your grid layer and unlock it and then with selection tool click and drag to select the white grids and then switch off the fill color so that they have a transparent fill lock the grid come back to your lines layer make sure you have no fill and a black stroke and double check your stroke panel to make sure there's a weight applied and from there grab your line tool and use the smart guide to help you draw out a line the length of the calendar hold shift to keep this line perfectly straight. Select it with selection tool, command plus to zoom in. Let's move this down and align it with the bottom of the grid. Then hold alt and click and drag one, two, three, and four lines or however many you like. Zoom out with command minus. Use the arrow keys to align this top line. Then with the selection tool, select all lines, come to your align panel and distribute objects evenly. Lastly, let's make these a lighter color. So make sure my stroke is selected, come to my swatches and I'm just going to select a lighter gray. And then if I click off, I've got my lines here. Select the four lines, hold alt, click and drag to create a duplicate, hold shift to keep this in line and lock this down at the bottom of the next grid, and then Command or Control D to duplicate this. Select off, Command minus to zoom out, and if I come to my layers panel, I now have my lines layer. Let's lock this, and lastly, let's just add some text up here to complete the calendar. So unlock the numbers layer, let's select it, come to the left hand side and turn off the stroke, then select the fill and let's just add a black color to the fill for now. You can always change this at another time. Command or control colon to turn back on my guides. Let's use the type tool, draw out a very simple type box at the top here. Remember this is on the numbers layer and I can either type the name of the month or I can leave it blank so that I can fill this in by hand. So let's just say month and add a few underscores to create a line. Select this with selection tool. Let's apply some styling via the character panel. Let's make this text Montserrat extra bold. Let's make it larger and then let's center align it in the paragraph panel. Select it with selection tool and we can make any final adjustments then using the arrow keys and click off the canvas to deselect it. Let's collapse the character panel. So the reason I've done this in layers is because now it's so much easier to make wholesale changes to the styling without having to deselect the layers on top. So for example, if I want to change the thickness of the grid, I can lock the numbers and text layer and the lines layer, unlock the grid, select grid, using my selection tool then I can select the entire grid and then I can come to my stroke panel and I can up the weight or bring the weight down accordingly. And you can see now this isn't affecting any of the text or any of the lines below. Yes, it might be a little more complicated putting things on different layers, but I think it gives you so much more control when it comes to adjusting the styles because you've got so many layers and text and lines on top of each other. Finally, let's export this. Command or Control S to save the Illustrator file and then File, Save As. Set your save location, set your format to PDF. I've only got one artboard, so I don't need to worry about turning on Use All Artboards. Press Save. Set the preset to PDF 2001. If I have marks and bleeds, I can turn them on here. And once you're happy, simply click Save PDF. Press OK. So just for reference, let's see the results. So here's my original Illustrator file that I can go back into any time and make changes. And here's my exported PDF in CMYK color mode for print, ready to be printed. And there you have it. That's how to create a blank calendar template in Illustrator and set it up in a way that it can be changed according to the month. So I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, keep on designing, and I will see you for the next tutorial.